Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the only board game review show endorsed by Sean Zambrennan. I'm Marie! Marie Zambrennan. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to travel all the way back to ancient Rome to take a look at Hannibal and Hamilcar from Phalanx Games. Hannibal and Hamilcar from Phalanx Games is, of course, created by Mark Simonvi Simonich. Simonich? Simonich. I've got a Simonich. Want to scratch it? Anyway, uh, he created the original uh, Hannibal Rome vs. Carthage in, I believe, the 1990s, and this is now an updated version of that war game. Now, this is a two-player game in which, of course, you know, one player takes on Rome, the other player takes on... Uh, uh, Carthage as they battle for supremacy during the Punic Wars in the Roman Republic, and they are trying to gain control over the Western Mediterranean. Essentially, you've got a two-sided game board, uh, depending on the mode you want to play the game with. Uh, you've got various provinces scattered around the, the, the board, of course, in, in Italy, in uh, you know, Gaul, in Iberia, in North Africa, and the islands there in the Mediterranean. And they each have, of course, kind of city spaces that have a number of political control markers on them, either red for Rome or blue for uh, Carthage. You're also going to have a number of walled cities. These are kind of square markers that you're going to place in these areas, and these are not spaces that are going to be easily taken over. Now, depending on the game you're playing, you're going to pick a specific scenario from a scenario book. Now, these scenarios, uh, of course, kind of range throughout the Punic Wars, the different uh, periods during throughout the, the Punic Wars and different setups you can, you can do with that. But essentially, uh, each side is going to have a number of generals, usually around three, and um, they're going to have combat units that are with them. Now, the combat units, of course, little tokens that have numbers on them that you're going to go ahead and uh, place next to your um, commanders, uh, your generals. Uh, and then, of course, you're also going to have a corresponding general card you're going to have next to you so you can see who the generals are and what they are. Now, your generals have different stats. First of all, they have a strategy rating, and then they have a... Um, a battle rating, and those are going to be very important in the game. More on that later. So every round, uh, you're going to deal out a number of cards to each player. Now, the rounds, uh, depending on what round you're in, it will say how many cards each player get. You get seven, eight, etc. Uh, over, over, you know, different uh, during different times during, during different rounds. Uh, you're going to take your cards, and these are your strategy cards. Your strategy cards really, the, the gameplay really revolves kind of around the strategy cards. Because strategy cards you can either play for the event, which is going to be something that's good, that's going to help you if it's in your color or if it's in both colors. Um, or you can kind of play it for the point value on the card. Now the point value, if you play that, you can do that in certain ways. You can play the point value to either activate a general via his strategy number. If the card you're playing has a number that is equal to or higher than the strategy rating of that general, you can then move that general. Um, you can also play the cards for the points to essentially lay down your political control markers on any empty political control spaces on the board. If there's any cities that don't have a control marker, you can lay down your political control markers. Now also, too, if you move a general onto someone else's political control marker, he doesn't automatically conquer it. On a subsequent turn, you would have to lay down a card in order, a strategy card, in order to use the points to flip that over to your political control. You can also play a strategy card to kind of mobilize more combat units for your generals as well. So as these two armies are kind of moving around, they of course occasionally are going to engage in battle. Now when you engage in battle, essentially what you do is if you move your units into a space that is occupied by your, your opponent, you are going to go ahead and fight a battle. And how a battle works is you get a number of battle cards based on a few factors. First of all, you're going to look at your general's battle rating, you're going to look at the number of CUs you have, and then there may be some incidental factors, like if you're in a space containing a friendly tribe or a few other factors, you may get additional battle cards as well. 
So you're each going to have a battle card. You can't have any, I think you can't have more than a hand of like 20, but you can get, you know, quite some big hands here. And essentially how the battles go is one side plays a card. And these cards have things like, uh, you, you know, the type of maneuvers, whether it's a right flank, left flank probe, frontal assault, uh, double envelopment, and then you've got a reserve that can, can match anything. But you play a card, and then the enemy has to play a card that matches that card. Now at that point, the enemy can roll the die to see if they can roll a number that is equal to or less than their general's battle rating. And if you can do that, then that means you get to go ahead, you get to lay down the next card, so you can attack. You essentially gain the initiative in battle. And then you do that, then the other player can try to steal the initiative, you go back and forth. But you're trying to get it to the point where your opponent cannot match a card. As soon as your opponent cannot match a card, he has lost the battle. You're each going to see how many rounds the, the, the fight went on, then roll a die, and you're going to check on a, on a grid to see how many both of you lose. You both lose that many units. But then the person who lost the battle, you're going to look at the card that was played with the maneuver, and you're going to roll a die on the retreat die. And the retreat die is a, you've got a smaller die if you've got units, I think, less than five units on one side in the battle. If you've got more than five units involved on both sides in the battle, you roll a big die. You're going to roll that die to determine how many units are killed in that battle then that many are disbanded and that person must retreat following of course certain retreat rules that's how battles are generally fought in the game you've also got some naval movement you can move units across the sea but you've got to roll the naval dice if you roll the naval dice that'll you've got to check with a card see if you lose any units uh through through naval movement now you also have sieges essentially if you go to a walled city or an enemy tribe you can lay siege essentially you as soon as you move in there you can roll a die on the siege chart and or the siege dice and the siege dice is corresponds to a chart that says what happens. Do you gain a siege point? Um, do you lose strength? And uh, you're going to, on subsequent turns, you can play a card for its points to continue a siege. Once you have three siege points, then that city falls and you claim it. Now, once all of the, the strategy cards have been played, um, you kind of move to the, to, the, to the end phase. The, the Roman player actually has to elect new consuls, new generals. So how he does that is essentially he can, he can select a pro consul, one of these guys to be a pro consul so he can stay on the board, but the other guys, they're going to go ahead, go back into the deck, you're going to reshuffle the general deck and draw two new generals. And then you're going to put two new generals on the board so you never know exactly who's going to be uh, commanding your armies from game to game, what their stats are going to be from turn to turn, rather. Now you also have a uh, winter attrition. If ever you've got a unit that is not on a space that it politically controls, maybe it's laying siege, you roll a die, and then depending on what that die is, um, depending on what the chart says with the die roll, they're going to lose some strength from their from their army. You're also going to check to see who has the most political control on the on the board, who controls the most provinces, that is controlling all of the cities in that province. If ever somebody uh, controls more than the other, the, the other side suffers a penalty, they have to remove some, some political control. And then you go ahead back into the next phase, and before you start up, you have reinforcements. The reinforcements are uh, predicated upon the scenario. The scenario tells you exactly how reinforcements are going to come out from game to game. So essentially you're doing this, you're going through the various rounds, you're trying to gain political control over colonies, but you've got to often fight people to do that. Um, you're trying to gain, you, you know, strongholds, the, the, the walled cities, you're trying to take those over. And the game will end either in a sudden death victory. If Rome conquers Carthage, or if Carthage conquers Rome, that's a sudden death victory. Um, otherwise, you play till the end of the scenario, what it says on the end of the scenario, and then whoever has the most political control, whoever controls the most provinces, wins... Hannibal and Hamilcar. Now, like I say, that, that is just a very, very brief overview of this game. There is a lot, there is a ton going on in this game. And like I say, Hamilcar also has some, some, some other rules with it as well, if you're playing that version of the game. So there's a lot of stuff in this game. There's a lot of, of, of rules that I just, I don't have the time or interest in getting into the minutiae here. I just want to give you the brief overview of the game. Um, so... The very first thing I want to talk about with, with this game is um, 20 years ago, uh, or so ago, I bought the Avalon Hill Hannibal Rome vs. Carthage. And I, I bought this game and I played this game with Zach one time. And i got to tell you, you know, our experience with gaming had pretty much been Axis and Allies, Diplomacy, maybe Risk. Pretty light games. And this was a pretty, this was a little more intense of a war game. So, so, so Zach and I started playing this game and we didn't get a lot of it. There was a lot of this game we didn't like, but we fell in love with this battle system, this idea of you've got to match and you've got to get the cards. I mean, that to us was just amazingly fun, and we loved that, and, and, and so we, we played it, I think, once or twice and played it wrong. I'm sure there's a ton of stuff we were playing wrong. Well, about, oh, five or six years ago, when Sean was between marriages, I broke this out and we played it, I think, once or twice again. 
and suddenly, boom, this game clicked, and it was like, oh my gosh, this game is so much better than I than I thought it was when I was playing with Zach, and it it and I liked it then, and I loved it when I kind of realized all the nuance of this game. Really liked the, this game quite a bit. But I hadn't played it, like I say, in five or six years. And it's one I kept thinking, well, I'll break out, I'll play it sometime. When I find the time, and, you know, they never found the time. I actually brought it with me here uh, to uh, to uh, Texas. So, I got it right here. And um, I I really like that game. But I, um, I you never got a chance to play it again. So I saw they were coming out with this new edition. I'm like, oh, I want to play that one. Good people at Phalanx Games sent me a copy to review. And that's what I'm doing right now. Um, so let me say, first of all, beautiful production. Absolutely beautiful production. You've got a ton of general figures, both Carthaginian and Roman, that match each of the general cards you can play, and that's awesome. There's also tokens. If you don't want to play the figures, you just want to use tokens. You can use the tokens as well, but the, the, the figures are so beautiful. I just, I love the figures. Um, they're, 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 they're fun to play with, and, you know, there's that kind of toy box feel you get with it. So I really, really like the production here. Card quality, quality is good. Board is absolutely beautiful. The dice are cool. You got this one, like the one massive retreat die is freaking awesome. Um, the, the the tokens for your combat units, you know, they're they're pretty much the same as they were in the original. No, nothing special there, but nothing bad. Artwork's great. You know, production wise, this knocks it out of the park. This is a brilliant production. Um, the rule book. Now here's kind of where I have some criticism. The rule book is not intuitive. The rule book is not interactive. The rule book, um, you know, it's one of those rule books that, that as you start reading it, they start talking about concepts that you don't understand until you read further in. And, you know, you need to, to, to write a rule book and, and have people kind of grow their understanding as they read. And I, this one did not do a very good job of doing that. I thought, I thought the, the, the rule book kind of dropped the ball. It's a really dense rule book, um, and there's important concepts there that you need to know to play the game. And, and so that bummed me out, that the, the, the rule book was not very good. It's not horrible, don't get me wrong. I've read much many worse rule books, many worse rule books. But this one was not as good as it could have been. And I think that might turn some people off, maybe. But the good news is the game itself, once you get your head around kind of the basic concepts, the game itself is pretty intuitive. You can figure out the game and, and then kind of use the rules you know, to supplement that. Um, I shouldn't say to supplement it, but, but to kind of jog your memory. Um, so that's the good news. The game itself is, is pretty, once you get basic core mechanics, you pretty much got the game. You understand it. You might need to look up a few little rules here and there. But it's, a, it's not a hard game on that level. I just wish the rule book would have reflected that better. Um, now I gotta tell you, this idea of playing the strategy cards with the events, the events are really cool. The events are, are things that, you, you know, uh, Sicilia revolts, so suddenly you lose all your political control in Sicilia, you know, or, or, or you know, or something like, uh, you know, the, the, you know, armies desert, in which case you can force your enemy to lose some of his, his, his combat, uh, units. Stuff like that, you can play dirty tricks on people, you know. But do you want to do it for that, or do you want to play it for the, the points, because you need to move a general or something like that? And the numbers are important, too, because I've got a general that's got a three, but I really want that three card to do the event, or maybe to muster some units. But i got to move that general, so i got to play it there. So there's tough choices like that, and I really like that. I really like how that plays and, and how that works in those systems. Really like that. Um, I, I like, you know, the... the, the um, the various tables, you know, I, I got to tell you, as a war, when, when I play war games, I'm, I see a bunch of tables, and generally it kind of turns me off. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. But here they, they work, and they work so well. That attrition table is brutal, and it's fun, and it's exciting to see what's going to happen. The siege, the way the sieges work, are very cool as well. Now, all of that, everything I'm talking about, and the naval battles too, um, <clears throat> everything I'm talking about there, everything, that's all good. That's all good stuff. That would make a good game. That would make a good game. But what makes Hannibal a great game, what makes it a great game, is that combat system, the, the, the trying to match cards. And this is something we've seen before. It's, they got something similar in 1989. I think it was uh, We the People had something like this, uh, which I think was also uh, Simon Edge too. I think. Um, but, 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 but it's so much fun. It's like right flank left flank, you know, you, you gotta play the cards and uh, that double envelopment, oh my gosh I, I was playing that game with Chris the other day you're seeing in the video, and, and, and both of us lost at one point on a double envelopment, and that is the worst that is brutal, that destroys armies 
it is such a fun and tense system because it's bluff and it's and it's double bluff. Do you have the cards? Does he have the cards? Should I keep playing the cards I got, hoping I can just wear them down, you know, or should I should I try something else? Should I try, uh, you, you know, to, to vary it and hope I can just hit on something? Or is he going to give something away? What's his poker face like? It's it's awesome. I love that card combat system. I love it. I. I would like to see it in more games. Not just in war games, although it's great in war games, but maybe in, in other games too. Like 1989, similar system. It was a lot of fun. I like that. <clears throat> so I love I love that, that the, 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 the combat in the game. You marry that to the great production. You marry that to the, to, the, to, the, to the kind of the strategic level of the game. And Hannibal's a winner. Hannibal and Hamilcar is a winner. Now, like I say, uh, you know, I, I, I've only... I'll tell you right now, I've only played the one scenario... Um, from this version of the game, but having played the other the other version, which and there's really not a lot of difference between this game and the earlier game, other than production, um, a few little tweaks in here and there, and then of course the Hamilcar stuff is different, which I haven't really gotten into. But just Hannibal, it's a it's fantastic. It's so much fun. This is a great two player war game. It's a longer game, you know. It's it's a few hours, but man, it's worth it. It is a very very good game. It looks beautiful. Um, I can't sing its praises enough. This is really a good one. The only the only problem I got with it is that rule book is not <laughs> as good as it could be. Hopefully, you can check out some more detailed videos. Um, will be available for it, and then maybe, of course, there'll be there'll be some some stuff on um, Board Game Geek. Fantastic game, uh, no question. And the recommendation for the discriminating gamer is absolutely buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on the Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on the discriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are the Discriminating Gamer, and you know, like Hannibal said, I love it when a plan comes together. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground, it's a long time. Ah! 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 Dang it! Double amount, man. Yeah!